Okay, let's work through some order of reaction practice questions. So the thing to always do is to look for uh, two experiments or trials, and you want to find two trials, ideally, where the concentration of one component is not changing, and the concentration of the other component is being changed by some easy factor. Usually, you can find one where they've doubled it. Uh, sometimes they'll be more annoying than that, but usually that's that's kind of the standard. So I can see that uh, from experiment one to two, I have doubled the concentration of A, and then I go and look at what happened to the rate. The rate in this case went four times faster. So this has had a, the, the change in concentration has had a squared effect on, uh, on the rate, so two and then squared, which implies that A is second order. So if I draw out my rate equation, I should get that A is second order. Okay, now I need to do the same thing for B. So I need to go find two trials where A is staying the same. That would be trials two and three, and B is being doubled now. And if I look at that, I see that there's no change. And that implies that B is zero order, which means I don't actually write it in my rate expression. Now you also want to find units. Uh, I'm not going to do this in everyone for the sake of time. But in this case, if I have A squared, I have concentration squared. So I've got mole squared, and I've got dm6 on the bottom. Now, on the other side, I need to have mole per dm cubed and then per some unit of time. In this case, the unit of time that was given up here uh, is per seconds. So my rate constant always, have to, always has to have that time unit on the bottom. But clearly, if I'm going to uh, cancel out, I need to cancel out some of these dms and some of these moles. So I need to have moles here. I'm sorry, this is just seconds to the first if I actually write it on the bottom. Uh, so I need moles uh, on the bottom in the denominator, and I'm going to need dm cubed uh, on the top. So I basically just figure out what the units of k are in order to cancel out any additional concentration units from all these higher orders of reaction. So in the end, the units of k are dm cubed, positive, mole to the minus 1, seconds to the minus 1. That will cancel out the mole squared and the dm6 down to the units of rate, which are on the left. Okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. Let's go to the practice questions. So I can see oxygen's being doubled while this is being held constant. And if I look at the rate, it's been doubled. That's a first order. If I look at trials one to three, uh, I see that oxygen's staying the same and NO is being tripled. And then I look over here. Okay, now here they've done something a little tricky which is they've changed the negative exponent. So it's hard. it makes it harder to compare. It makes it look like maybe it's gone down. But in fact, if we make it 10 to the minus 8, we can see that the, the value has gone up to 10.8 from 1.2. So you can imagine this is sort of a common IB trick. Now, I've tripled the NO concentration, and that's actually an increase, a factor of 9 if you divide... 10.8 by 1.2, it equals 9. So that means we're having a squared effect. And so we're getting rate equals k, and then NO2 and O2. Now I see in this question, it asks you to solve for the value of the rate constant. All you have to do is pick values from one of the trials. So you could pick like all these values here. You plug in 0.1 for NO, you plug in 0.1 for O2, you're solving for k, and you plug in 1.2 times 10 to the minus 8 for rate. And then you just do a little algebra and solve for k. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead because this is kind of more of the same, more of the same. Uh, if we get to one like 5, uh, in 5 you've now got 3 reactants, so it's possible to have 3 reactants. Now, what I mean by that is actually there's only 2 reactants, but if they list H+, plus, that's because H+, plus must be a catalyst. And catalysts just like reactants, because they're involved somehow in the reaction, their concentration can have a certain order to it in terms of how it affects the reaction rate. So again, let's find uh, two trials and compare. So I'm going to look at, uh, from trial one to two, what's happening with this propanone here. And I can see that it's being tripled. And I can see that this rate is more or less being tripled. Um, so that's first order. If I then see that from trials 1 to 3, I can look at what happens with H+. Plus. Here's another funny thing that they do. You go from 0.02 down to 0.01. Now, that's halving, which is fine. But if you just flip how you think about it, I find it easier to think about it doubling. 
So I'm looking at from trial three up to trial one, I'm doubling it. You're allowed to do that, it's no difference. So from trial three up to trial one, I see that the rate is doubling. So for H plus, also one order, uh, first order. And then if I compare, let's see, I have to do uh, trial one to trial four. If I compare trial one to trial four, I can see that the I2 is doubling, but the rate is more or less not changing. So iodine here would be a zero order. So I got first order, first order, and zero order for iodine. Okay, and then the last one here. So now I've got three reactants. Again, looking for uh, just changing one reactant at a time. So I've got doubling of A. Again, they've done the annoying thing with the negative exponent. So if I undo that, put them both back to 10 to the minus 4, I see that the, the rate has essentially been doubled, 6.5 to 13. So that implies that A is first order. Then I want to find two trials where I can compare for this B component. So that's here and here. Again, I'm going to look at it going up from 3 to 1. That's a doubling. And if I look at what happens from here to here, I've got 1.6 becoming 6.5. That's approximately four times. And again, if you actually do this in a lab, you're probably not going to get exact, exact integer values. So you're going to, you're going to round. And I can see that that's a squared effect. That's a second order reactant. Now I have to find a trial to figure out C. Now, I made this one annoying on purpose. There are no two trials where uh, you change C and you don't change the others. Every now and then, the IB does this to you in a question. I don't know why you would ever do this if you are actually carrying out an experiment like this to determine the orders. It seems like you've made your life really difficult, but in IB questions, they may do that to you. So you just have to, you just have to pick two trials to compare um, why not pick, let's see, trials one and uh, trial four. So I have to actually use what I've figured out already to figure out what effect C is having. So in this, from trial one to four, I'm tripling A, which I already know it's first order. So that should mean I triple the rate from that change in A. And then if I look at B, B is being uh, doubled. So I'm doubling B, that should have a squared effect because I know that B is second order. That's gonna cause four times the rate to increase by a factor of four. So these two changes on their own should make the rate get 12 times faster. So let's look at that. If I do 6.54 times 12, that is, uh, would get me to a, a 78.5. Um, I think I did that right, let me see that. Six. 0.54 times 12, just to make sure. I wasn't really paying attention yet. So that's about 78.5, uh, which would be like 7.85 times 10 to the minus 3. Well, I can see in 4 that I'm, I'm higher than that. I'm kind of like 15.7 times 10 to the minus 3, or I'm at 157 times 10 to the minus 4. And so I can see that compared to 78, um, I've actually gone up um, another two times higher. And so for C, I'm doubling C from trials one to trial four, and that seems to be having a doubling effect uh, on this rate. So that one's much harder to see because you have to take into account the other reactants concentrations effects first, um, but I can see that there's an additional doubling of rate that's happening, which I can only explain from whatever C is doing. So this would be one where you have first order for A, second order for B, and first order for C.